faithful to keeping his word in our lives and I believe that we are in for another fantastic time. So if you're ready, let me know uh, and please remember to share. Share, share, share. If you don't share this video, it's not going to bless anybody. So go ahead and share the video so people can join us. Reverend. Glad to be back here. What a delight. Yeah, from the from the end of the earth. From literally. the ends of the earth yeah. to Norway. Yes. My God. Well, we have been talking about discipleship. And uh, uh, you and I know that this is something that is so necessary in our day to day. Yes, Christian, you're welcome. Uh, Nazuru, Kabiru, where are you joining us from? You can also write and let us know where you're joining us from. I know I have people already in India who um, are joining us tonight, Nigeria, UK, uh, of course, Norway, and uh, perhaps the US. Let us know where you're joining us from, and, and tonight promises to be another beautiful night in the name of Jesus. So as I was saying, we were talking, we've been talking about discipleship and, and to see how much, how much um, that many of us, Many Christians have not gone through 
the necessity or the importance of being discipled. And this is why we are here to help. And I'm happy to have Reverend Shegun here. He's a veteran. He's a father, a mentor, and uh, he's not just saying something from theory. He's speaking from experience of many, many years. And you're in for another beautiful time. So let's make him welcome as we start tonight in the name of Jesus. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let's pick it up. Um, we spoke about eight years. Kavya, thank you from India. Uh, we, we spoke about there were some pillars um, that are necessary, important pillars uh, for discipleship. And Reverend has been talking about that uh, the couple of days we've been on. Uh, by the grace of God, we will take this uh, uh, hopefully daily uh, this week, this week, only this week. So stay in tune and join us so you can be a blessing. Sir. Yes. What is discipleship? Let's start from there. Again, uh, we've defined it severally. Uh, many definitions were simply a follower, a learner, the one who follows his master, the one who learns from his master and, you know, become like his master. The ultimate aim, the goal of a leader, of a master, is to raise apprentice, apprentices who can replicate his life. They want to, he wants them to be able to go out and then replicate the life you know that he has lived and that's why uh, jesus did not call us uh, just christians he called us you know those who have the spirit of christ he says they are light i said their cities uh, their city is set on her and then their lights are candles that cannot be hidden and other things he called us and so when we understand what uh, that discipleship means or being a disciple means a follower Mm. a reflector, mm. a disseminator of the master's life mm. and the one that the master, uh, you know, depends on mm. to replicate his life mm. before people. Mm. Then it gives us, it adds responsibility mm. to us, mm. you know, because then we know who we are and you know what is, we know what is expected of us. Mm. Anything other than that we will not be fulfilling the commission of Jesus, mm. which he said, as the Father has sent me. And so, in the last episode, we said that as the Father has sent me, so said I you, implies that the same way the Father sent me, and I came, you know, representing him so much so that he did not claim originality. Mm. You know, Jesus was like saying, I'm not original, because if you ask, would the real Jesus stand up? The man standing up will tell you is the father standing up. Mm. So he just said to me, I'm not original. He says, what I see the father do, that's what I do. Whatever he sends me, that's what I do. The words he put in my mind is what I speak. The judgment is what I do. And, you know, so everything. And then Philip was now saying, okay, you know, some time ago, uh, somebody came and said, you know, a, a Messiah is coming. Mm. And we accepted that. Okay, you know. And then you came. We left John and we followed you. Mm. Now you're telling us the father is greater than yourself. Okay, it's all right. Let's take care of it. If the Father is greater, and, you know, there's someone called the Father outside of you, yeah. okay, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. We won't come back. Yeah. And Jesus will say, but ah, the Father, once you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm. So on that note, he's saying, as the Father has sent me, and I lost my identity in the Father, so that when you see me, you can say, hey, this is who Jesus is, apart from the Father. So send I you mm. to lose your identity in me. Mm. So when people see you, all they see is me. Mm. And if all they see is me, then, it's, then God is no longer far because God is in the neighborhood. Mm. Wow. He's walking wow. in the neighborhood. The one that says the kingdom of God is here. That's at right. Hand. That's right. He brought the entirety of heaven That's right. close to us. That's right. My, my, my. I want to welcome you once again. I'm, I'm actually, we're going to take a short, um, a short music. I need to fix um, one short music, um, a sound here. Uh, so hold on. Don't run away. Just give me uh, like two minutes and we will be back is it okay guys is it okay amen amen see you in a jiffy
I know you were enjoying that, but we're going to bring that back to you if, if, if there's a lot of demand for it. Well, we're talking about discipleship, and someone said a message we need today. Indeed, Reverend. Yeah, you know, we, we already had looked at some pillars. You know, it's, it's intriguing for me that we are this careless. I mean, the church. Why is it intriguing? You know, because I had done a lot of mission work in the, you know, in, in areas populated by Muslims in Nigeria and all that. So I know if a person was converting to Islam within the first week, within the first week of his um, conversion. conversion, he taught the five pillars of Islam. Mm -hmm. He taught the five pillars of Islam. He needs to know that by heart mm -hmm. and live that. Mm -hmm. Why do people get converted for one year? They don't know pillars of discipleship. Mm. The mm. basic fulcrum, the, the, the form work, the foundation of the faith they've accepted. Mm. And that is why it's easy for a Muslim to just go in on the basis of those five pillars. Mm. And that is what they live for. That's the tenet. So our own tenet of discipleship, or the, our own tenet as Christians, is are built on this discipleship. That is all. Those are the eight things. And we explain that the first one is that a disciple must be as his master. Mm. No more do you have excuses. I'm not Jesus. I'm not God. You don't expect that from me. No. He said a disciple, anyone who is a disciple, he said it is time now. He said a disciple is not greater than his master. Mm. But now it's time for the disciple to be as his master. Be as his master. Because that's the goal of every teacher. That's yes, the goal of every master. Is to raise these ones to be as you. Hmm. And in fact, better than you. Yes, sir. So, no more excuses. You say, well, uh, well, that's the way, that's my nature. That's the way I'm created. No, 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 no. You are to be as the master. Someone once said to me, was we was settling an issue. The person was so angry at something. I said, you can't be this angry. Say, Pastor, you don't understand. This is me. This is me. When I get angry... This is I, who I am. Uh, but that's not who you are if you are a child of God. Exactly. Because if any man be in Christ, it's, it's a, a new, new creation. creation. And at that point of new creation, instantly the, the Lord came to inhabit you with all his, his grace. What, what you call the fruit of the Spirit. It comes in when you get born again. Not after you are filled with the Holy Ghost. No. The gifts will come after that. But the fruit comes in when you receive the Lord. Sir. But the outworking mm. is where we miss it. Yes, sir. We assume that once it happens, if I don't stop uh, learning to get angry, automatically uh, it comes in and destroys that. No, 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 no. It comes with you understanding mm. that, in fact, here is a way to test it. Everything you have of God Hmm. is tested in some way. Hmm. So if you're asking the Lord, Lord, I want to be more patient. How do you get patient? When opportunity to be impatient comes, don't take it. So some of some some people, let's let's bring it, let's bring it faster. <laughs> it means because many times somebody say, I'm leaving this church because we are believers. We talk in the in context of the church. Yeah. Somebody says, Oh, I'm leaving this church because somebody has offended me. And you just pray that, Lord, help me to work on my patience. Help me to walk in love. And then you met with people that didn't understand you. And then you walk away from opportunity to grow in that. Is hey. Because every gift or every fruit that we receive from God do not come into its total embodiment. Mm. It comes in seed form. In seed form. It is what you now do with that seed. That it, because it's all together. Possible that the seed will live out its lifetime here without fulfilling potentials mm. because it was not planted. It was not planted. You kept running. You carry your, you carry your seed and from you place run, to place. You, from, from place to place. And you see, in God's university of silence or training, there are no automatic promotions. <laughs> he will never give you automatic promotion. In other words, if you were supposed to learn patience here, you want God to really use you, and you have to be patient in this church. If you run away, the next church you go, because you have a problem with Pastor here, the next church, it will be the deacon. <laughs> then you run from there. The next church is going to be, you know, workers or every member of the church. But if you don't take that, the next church you go in, on your, at your arrival there, just welcoming you will be a slap from the usher. Hmm. 
And you say, oh, the church has hurt me. The church has wounded me. No, 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 no. God out of love doesn't want you to go beyond, you know, enter into a realm where you can't handle what is there. Mm -hmm. Because the higher you go with the things of God, the more contradictions comes along. The more challenges, the more temptation, the more the things you face. And so God loving you doesn't want to, you to destroy yourself. So what it does is giving you the opportunity to learn. Character building opportunities. It's called character development. And in character development, there are things that are that are natural to you, mm. that came with you, you were born with it, you were born in a family where you have, um, you know, people are generous, people are loving or they are kind. Those things are there. When you come into Christ, they are submitted to Christ, and with Christ coming into you, it he helps you more fully mm. by his spirit to now live that life, mm. to give expression to that life. Mm. Nothing works automatically. Wow. You have to work them. So even when Colossians is saying that you are complete in him who is the head of principality and all that, and that we are complete, that we are complete in him, we are complete in that spirit. As he is, so are we. So all the Jesus there is to get is in your it's spirit. It's in the spirit. All the wisdom there is to get is in the spirit. Didn't he even say in First John chapter 4 when he's saying that we know of you have an anointing that you, no. from the Holy One that no one needs to teach you anything. You know, because of the anointing, it's yeah. residual. But you know that you don't know everything in your head. Mm. So that's why you pray for two hours or three hours. Then suddenly you said, I think I have an idea. And some of you, sorry, sir. And some of you are running from prayer, you know, not knowing that in that place of prayer is a place of solution. That's where it is. So the same thing, the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit, all of them, they is like miniature. You know, they come in seed form. Mm. But the outworking yes, sir. is the process. And like we said, you know, yesterday, you know, God, God could have said, let there be light, let the world be created, let trees grow, let this happen. And how could you just say, uh, God created heaven and earth, and there was darkness upon the and he said, let there be light. And then, and then he goes, that's all for the day. He's telling you that I don't do my things in a rush. Mm. I have order to the way I operate. My, my. And if I operate by that order, mm. it's systematic. I come in seed form. He could have put 7.9 billion people on the face of the earth. He could have put all of them there. Let there be human beings all over the earth. 7.9 billion I will be there. Right. But what he did was to first introduce the first man. And then put his woman inside. And later took the components and then made them. And gave a man and a womb man. Another man with a womb. Make a woman, and then they copulate and begin to produce, mm. and they began to increase. And even science and big bangers and and uh, evolutionists have not been able to deny that we migrated from one part of the world to another part. Mm. You know, human beings were growing and moving, and so you say, okay, somewhere in Africa, so you find the oldest human, you know, remained Homo sapiens or whatever. So you see that all of this indicates that. Everything God does is in seed form mm. and progression. So you are not going to say, Lord, give me patience, give me love, give me this. And you hope to get it all. I mean, manifest all of them at their fruition. Yes, sir. They are trees and they have to bear fruit. And to bear fruit, they need to grow. Mm. They need to be watered. Mm. And the way you water the fruit of patience or the tree of patience is by meeting with people that will task your patience. The way you water a person, how do you get, uh, you become a giver, how do you water that? Is by having people in need. Mm. Then you give. Love, kindness, every one of these things are there, which are fruit of the Spirit. The way you give ex expression is to grow. There is, there, there's a thought that those who live in the, here will understand. Yeah. Um, every year or every two years, depending on how new, how good your car is, yeah. you must take it to the workshop. Yeah. And government has to approve that your car is roadworthy. Yeah, to continue so to use it. Could it be that yeah. God's mechanism yeah. for keeping us roadworthy yeah. is discipleship and of through the course, church? Of course. That is why we are at different levels of our work with God. Mm. You see, when it comes to faith, we were all giving the same. To every man, he has given the the measure of faith, the measure. Hmm. So, you know, and then when Peter was writing, he said, Simon Peter, to them who are of like 
precious yeah. faith. Mm. So all of us have the same level of faith, the same amount of faith from the beginning. Mm. The challenge, however, is we do not always exercise the same amount of faith. Not mm. because we couldn't have exercised that, but by reason of choice, choice some decided to grow, some decided they won't grow. Mm. Some decided to use theirs, some decided they won't use theirs. Mm. And there is no mechanism, there's no technology in the scriptures where all of the things that God intends to do or he has given to us, we all manifest overnight. Okay, so we all have kids, isn't it? Hmm. And then why is it that the day you ask for, oh, oh Lord, uh, husband and wife, we need kids. Or you say, well, I'm having a delay. Pastor, pray for me. I, I, I need a kid and all that. It's not the day he prays that a nine-month-old baby jumps out of you. Yeah. Because if the baby comes out with teeth and start talking, you will disown the baby. You will run away. So the gifts of the Spirit are like that. They are deposited on the inside of us. Mm. But that deposit requires that you, leave, you give expression to them. And, you know, because the universe in which we live, this planet, doesn't function without pressure. Everything mm. is pressure. You mm. don't give birth to a baby without pressure. Mm. Your best doesn't come out without pressure. Mm. Even your organs do not recognize that they are being used. Unless they, you, you exercise and you are breathing, then your organs are feeling, the heart is feeling, then the muscles are exercised. To move, you have to put pressure on your muscles. Yeah. Then they can strengthen your bones. Yeah. To look at thing, things, to hear, to eat, you need pressure. You, so you breathe by, through muscles and pressure on your system. Mm. So the entire planet functions with pressure. Mm. Therefore, there is no way, there's no technology that God has designed spiritual technology whatsoever, into human lives that will make him come into experiences that he doesn't exercise with. Mm. So you must exercise them. That's oh why the Bible will say, exercise yourself to godliness. Exercise, Ooh. exercise. Working out the acts of discipleship. Yes, sir. So that's why it says, a disciple must be as his master. At the same time, if we went ahead to say, a disciple will bear his cross and follow him. Hmm. What does it mean to bear your cross? If you have to cry, carry the cross the way Jesus did, he, you know that it's, a, it's an effort on your side. It is. <laughs> so why do you think you want to be a disciple and then it's going to happen automatically? Hmm. No. It's an, it takes effort. It takes effort. Everyone, you know, likes to live the way he wants to live. And everyone wants to lie down for 24-7 and take breakfast and lunch in bed <laughs> and do everything. But you know you will die. Mm. If you do that for so long, you're going to die. If you, for any reason, you have to stay on your bed 24-7, just eating and, you know, and you're going to die. Mm. Because you have to work it out. For the sugar to, 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 to work, I mean, for the sugar to get used, for energy to come to the body, for the body to feel healthy, you need to get off your butt and exercise mm. and do something. Mm. And to that extent, that is the same way carrying the cross is. It is not, when people begin to throw insult at you or you deprive yourself, there are times that you feel like responding to people. Yeah. And you feel like giving them a piece of your mind. <laughs> but you're carrying a cross. Hmm. You're carrying a cross. And you see, and the patients, all of the things we did that came, uh, that come in seed form, they're so small, like one of our brethren, he says, so small like the monster seed. But Jesus says he's the smallest among them. But eventually they come in and they big, big trees. Yeah. So when yeah. you hear a great man of God that you've never seen him angry, you've never this, you've never seen him say, no, they insulted or he walks away. Well, he started with a seed. There are times that you feel like getting on your knees to pray for some folks and say, Lord, take them off the face of the earth. Mm. You feel like you will all get tempted. Mm. But we don't take those, those thoughts. We don't act on feelings. We don't feelings. act those feelings. It's part of bearing your cross. It's a conscious effort to say, although he died at the cross, my way is not going to go to die directly on that mm. cross, mm. but to die daily. Mm. Die daily. Die to self. Man, die to my feelings. Daily. You know, and, and uh, you are tempted with money. Don't say, oh, it was because I had no money. You are tempted with women. Don't say it's because, um, you, know, uh, you know, I'm just naturally weak here. 
you are tempted with so many other things. It, everyone is tempted the same way. Mm. And we have the same feelings. We have the same experiences. Mm. We all go through the same thing. Mm. But what you do with yours will determine whether you are carrying the cross or not. Somebody said, it's not the bait, but it is the bite. Yeah. If they will always bait you. That's, that's it. That's work. And it's cure. We use the cure to bait you. But what are you doing with it? And the third thing we spoke about is deny yourself. Mm -hmm. And we did explain. They say, make your difference between self-denial and deny yourself. Self-denial is saying, well, I want to give up this, I give up this, I give. But when it comes to denying self, is denying self the right and the opportunity to be Lord over the house of the Lord? You know, that's why that scripture says, wherever the spirit of the Lord is. You see, one translation puts it the best, the original way they say, Wherever the spirit of the Lord, wherever the spirit of, of the Lord is Lord. Mm. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is Lord, wherever you allow him to be Lord, then there is liberty. Mm. So you have, you, you, it takes your cooperation to say, I'm denying self the right to be the governor of this life. Right now, guys, share this video. Somebody, it might just be a saving grace for someone right now. Go ahead and share it. Share it right now. Share it. Just Pause and share and be a blessing to someone. This is yeah. so good material. My God. Yeah. So if we can get through that, you know, if we can get into people's brain, I hope we can quickly run through the rest. If we get into their heads, that discipleship takes effort. Hmm. There are no conditions that tells you that it's going to be automatic. In fact, God didn't promise you that. Why will he say, take up your cross and follow me? Daily. No, daily. Knowing how heavy the cross is. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Knowing how heavy the cross is. You know, you mm. know, we are discussing the kind of body you have for now where the, you literally, you're forgetting how to speak your English the way you should, <laughs> as, speaking your language because you have become Norwegian by calling mm. and say, this is my nation. Mm. And then you took your cross, you follow, mm. you give, you're giving it your all. Mm. This is a daily experience. This is a daily experience. And the next one is he spoke about is forsaking all. And that we see uh, um, in Matthew chapter, in Luke chapter 14, verse 33, uh, where he says, so then any one of you who does not forsake, that is renounce, surrender, you surrender his claim to give up or say goodbye to all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. I laugh at this because there was there was a daughter who cried yeah. when I shared this scripture. I said, God said, you've got even family, father, yeah. mother. Yeah. He said, how can I leave her? I said, I'm not saying leave your parents, yeah. but do you know what it means? Yeah. It then means that now you say, I belong to someone. Yeah. And so whatever that someone says, supersedes any other demand from anyone else. Yeah. Of course, he did not say you should hear them. No. He rebuked the Pharisees for not allowing them to help their parents. Yeah. And he said, you can't stop them from helping their parents. Hey, but he is saying, you have to get to a point where you see yourself as belonging to someone else yeah. who redeemed you. <laughs> and at that level, then you find out that if there are demands from family, from parents, from loved ones that contradicts what you want. You can't say yes to it. You know, I remember when I was going to get married and, you know, because of where, you know, I was married from. And, and you know, we had a lot of differences mm. with my family. Mm. And my mother, you know, called me and said, son, you've never disobeyed me. Mm. You listen to me. Mm. I'm surprised you are taking a difficult stand. He said to me, why not listen to what we are saying? I said, Mommy, I made a mistake. And she said, what? I said, the mistake was that I already gave my life to Christ. <laughs> and, I said to, and I said to him, you have me all. Whatever you want, that's what I... And the day he told me, that's the word. I said, I mistakenly said yes to him. Oh, my God. I can't say no to him anymore. But if you can go to talk to him and say, release my son from this Commitment he has to you as your disciple. 
I let him listen to me. I said, Mommy, I will follow whatever you say. <laughs> My dad said, Leave this young man alone. <laughs> because then it's like I'm pitching them against God. Yeah. I said, I've given to God. I said My to them, I've, I've given my life, and whatever God says, you say it's whatever you say. Okay, you go take permission from God. Let him tell me. Let me give another example from my own life. Yeah. When when um w w I was in the university first year, where, okay. and then I was also with Re 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 um in uh, in Foodmina at okay. Foodmina, trying yeah. to get into the school and and study engineering because that's what my parents wanted. Yeah. You know, he was an engineer, worked with the railways, and he said, look, um, this Christianity thing at that time, you know, pastors are poor. Yeah. Go get. Uh, be an engineer, be yeah, rich. Yeah. And I'd been crying to the Lord and just saying, Lord, what do you want for me? What do you want for me? Praying daily. And on one of the nights, right in the school, in the university classroom there, um, th I had a vision. I had a dream at night. Listen, if your heart is right, God, yeah. will, God will lead you. He yeah. will guide you. Yeah. And if you allow him, if you let him be the ultimate, the absolute, he will come through. And that's yeah. what we're talking about, discipleship. I was crying to the Lord, what do you want me to do? I know what my father want me to do. It's not, there's nothing bad with it, but what, whatever you say will be final for me. Yeah. And the Lord came through for me. I, yeah. In the night, I had a vision, a dream, and I saw a man writing the name of a school. T-R-I-C-O-M-A, Trichoma. And he tapped the board and I woke up. He gave me an instruction. I asked the Lord. Yeah. I made the Lord my ultimate, my yeah, absolute. That's all. And so I spoke to my dad and mom and said, this is, and they said, no, you can't do that. I'm sorry. I disobeyed my parents on that. Yeah. I left the university and went to Bible school. Today, my that was one thing my dad would say. He said, uh, well, you know, it's not good to disobey your parents, but I'm glad you disobeyed that Disobe one. <laughs> <laughs> because they are now understanding what discipleship is all yes, about. Yes, sir. And you haven't regretted your saying to yes to the Lord. No. Neither has your parents. They are glad. Neither have your parents re regretted that. They are, they are glad that we had a son who said yes to the to Lord. To the Lord. And said no to us when it hurts. Yes, sir. But now we are seeing the benefits. We are seeing the benefits of his saying Kalabashi yes to the Lord. Telebrasu, discipleship Kalabashi tends to... You are, some persons think that when you are a disciple, it then means that you have no life. No. He creates a new life for you that that we we gel with his eternal plan for you mm. and you will make all the difference in your world mm. because he sends you to a world mm. look at where the gospel has taken you to all over the world today yes, sir. look at look at you had opportunity to remain you have a church uh you you found it in germany and the lord said no i want you in norway mm. but you already had a base in the united states yes, sir. you schooled there. you did all that so why was it taking you around all of these things just to prove that if you say yes to me, you don't necessarily do without the good things. Mm. And some of the people who said no to the Lord, we don't. You you can tell where they are. Mm. They are not anywhere close to where God has yes, brought them. Yes, sir. You. And so, you know, I would say yes to the Lord does not mean you know you forsake or does not mean you have no relationship with your parents. I mean, you brought them into Norway. You brought them into say you you love them. You talk about them. You all that. So say yes to the Lord doesn't mean that you don't take care of your parents. A song came up in my head. And I pray somebody will let this ring in your heart. It says, I'll say yes, yeah. Lord, yes, yeah, yeah. to your spirit and to your will. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. And this is my prayer. Somebody asks this question. He says, man of God, could it be that we need to let go of the elements in our lives, holding us back from following Jesus with all our heart? Is that a way of carrying a cross? Of course. Of course. You know, in taking your cross, it has to do with enduring the contradictions of life. Exactly. It has to do with, you know, meeting with these challenges that that tend to, you know, contest the lordship of Christ in your life. Mm. What happened to the cross? That when you know whether you carry your cross, is, what happened on the cross? Mm. You know that it's death. Mm. You know it's shame. Mm. It's crucifixion. Mm. And carrying your cross requires well, that you shame. deal with certain things. You deal death blow with on certain things. Yes, and say, Lord. You know, I'm re I'm ready to let this go. Because at the end of the day, 
Yeah. It's not about you, yeah. it's about him. Yes, sir. It's about what is finished on your behalf. Mm. And you want to tap into it, you want to flow in that life. Mm. That's why when Paul was writing, he says, and you have not, oh well, the writer of Hebrews say, and yet you have not resisted unto <laughs> blood, <laughs> striving <laughs> against sin. Yes, sir. So, you know, your resistance against temptation or carrying your blood has not even cost, uh, carrying your, your cross, hasn't cost your blood yet. Mm. It's just your feelings that are hurt. It's just your, your, your ego that is bruised. Mm. It's just the things that you want. Those are the things. And that is far from the man whose life was terminated. Mm. Gruesomely mm. on the cross. Mm. So if you are carrying a cross, then you know exactly what we're talking about. So it says forsaking all, renouncing, surrendering, the claim and giving it. Well, you, and, and, and that's the best life to live. <laughs> because God will give you what... Pursuing your personal, you know, your personal ambition cannot do. When you let God guide you, you know, and you flow with him, it, it takes you to your destination faster. You know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine and we met and he's retired now. And so he introduced me to someone and he said, uh, so, so he said, ah, do you know this person? He said, uh, he said, yes, I know him. And, you know, I drove to his office. He said, I know him. And he said, who is he? He said, this is my friend, he said, we slept on the same bed all the years we were in school. Huh. He said, this is my very close friend. And I mean, we, we, we read together in the library. We stayed all night. We did that. Then he said, the man asked him, he said, why is he looking like this? And you are looking like that. He said, well, he is a pastor. And uh, this, he said, and uh, I believe God, uh, is the grace of God. He said, you need that grace to look the way <laughs> he's looking. You, you understand? It's so funny. You know, I just smiled and all that. But I went back thinking, okay. This guy, we, indeed, then I took a look at him, mm. and he's looking, you know, you know, like one old person, same person that we stayed day and night together. So I haven't regretted saying yes to the Lord because he has not deprived me of anything that is good yes, in life sir. that I haven't yes, had. If, if um, just so you know, guys, you can also send in a question if you have questions and we can take that up. But, sir, I want you to talk on the issue with the absolute. I know that it's a different teaching because this is what helped me. Yeah. I found out who was the absolute in my life, okay. and it was God. It was not trying to achieve a, a lifestyle. I wasn't running after finance, money. Yeah. I wasn't trying to get status. Yeah. I was just trying to please him. Yeah. I wanted God for myself. Yeah. And he became my absolute. That was what made it possible for me to say no to a good suggestion yeah. and follow God. Because not all good suggestions are of God. Hmm. Could, it be, could it be that the reason why a lot of people are falling away is because God has not become their absolute? We are going to the next one. It Shalabha says, Sandra. abiding his words and his teachings. Hmm. It says in John chapter 8, verse 30 to 32. As he said these things, many believed, trusted, re relied on, and adhered to him. Hmm. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, hmm. if you abide in my word and in hold fast word. to my teachings and live in accordance yeah. with them, yeah. then you are truly my disciple. So you see, you don't get to create an absolute if you have nothing to stand for. Hey. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. That's the that's the principle of life. If you stand for nothing, you're going to you fall will for everything. Fall for everything. And and so what happened was this: you came in contact with Christ, you gave yourself to Him, and and then submitted yourself as a disciple. Hmm. Received him and became his disciple. Yeah. So that automatically, whatever he says became your absolute. Yes, sir. The moment you think there are alternatives to what God has said explicitly in his word, you are lost. You miss mm -hmm. out completely. You can't be said to be a disciple. You can't be a disciple and have a different agenda from your boss. Hey, Carlos Katanda. If your boss has trained you how to fix the telephone, fix computer, that's where you go. You can learn other things as you go on, but what he taught you is what you start your life with. Hmm. And you cannot have other... You see, there's something called alternative lifestyle. Hmm. I want you to go study that, everybody listening now. Alternative lifestyle. You see, what they call gay today... 
or call a, a whatever and some, you know, different things, uh, homosexual, lesbianism, or other. It was originally not called, those they were called alternative lifestyle. lifestyle. That is because it was not a convention. Mm. It runs against convention. Mm. It tries to go in where something should come out. Mm. It tries to run against nature. Mm. And once you are trying to run against nature, you are invariably invoking, you know, the uh, nature, the force of nature to go against you. Mm. Because then you cannot control nature. You only get to control nature to the degree you are in submission to, to the nature, creator. To the crea yeah, to the creator of, of that nature. nature. So you can't control creation. Absolutely. You will not be controlled. It will rebel against you. Only the creator can control. Only the creator can do that. So, now, if you are not in submission, because it's the rule of, it's one law of the universe that if you fail to submit to the one who creates, then what he creates will rebel against you. Will not submit will to Will not you. submit to you. And it's so simple. Electricity. Some persons, you know, God created electricity, so that's the But some persons, you know, discover the use it. electricity. And then you go to buy appliances, uh, bulbs, and whatever it is. And then instructions are written on those things, how you need to operate them. They have a manual. There's manual hmm. that says this is how you must operate this system. If you fail to do that, then those things don't deliver their dividends to you. They will malfunction. They will malfunction. <laughs> you can use your computer unless you follow the instruction. If you don't turn on the body, if you don't charge it, you, so, the, and you can say, well, I, I don't like what the manufacturer, I don't like what Apple is doing, or HP, why should they ever tell me to do this? Well, no matter how much you hate them, if you want to use their product, you have to abide. You have to follow the instructions. And so, if you have no manual of life, if you have not come to a point where his word is absolute and you can't think of other alternatives, no matter what is prevalent in the society, because in the world we live in now, because of internet, because of all that, everybody begins to think that whatever is prevalent on the internet must be the right thing. Must be the right thing. But you and I know that sometimes if you read a story about yourself on the internet, you won't know. Mm. who they are describing because mm. the people lie and the, 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 the most foolish set of people are those who take word for word to take as gospel what they read on the internet mm. because mm. anybody can make up stories and all that and present it to the world as if he was telling the truth mm. and so you see because somebody has read this and then you know there is gay pride there is this pride there is this one and everybody is fighting to defend what the, the you know to explain the lifestyle they have chosen the alternative lifestyle. That doesn't make it the truth. It doesn't make it the word of God. So your job, therefore, is to so adhere to your master's instruction, so much so that it becomes your absolute. Hmm. That whatever anybody else is saying, you will not be moved. I will not be moved. Anybody can choose whatever they want to yeah, choose. They can decide. It their will life. not change, it your, change mind your, about your convictions about your absolute. No, no. And I think this is what is missing in the body of Christ. We have many believers who are probably listening to me to us right now yeah. that don't have a strong absolute. That's right. And so it becomes easy for. So they don't even have an absolute. That's true. Because absolute doesn't Absol have to be weak or strong. Absolute is absolute. Absolute is absolute. <laughs> Once you have absolute. Okay, okay, so. Why the person who thinks that you know we're, we're just speaking gibberish, why don't you use your driver's license hmm. as the means of traveling to another country and see how it works? Hmm. At the airport, if you bring out the driver, the way you like a driver's license, I want to go to the UK, they tell you sorry, your, your passport because you, you travel with international passport. Hmm. That's what they need to see. Mm. Any part of the world you want to go, you need international but not a driver's license. Mm. Then if you come back to Norway and then you now want to drive a car and they said, uh, and the police stops you and said, can I get your, your, your ID. ID? Then you bring out your international uh, uh, passport. He said, no, 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 I mean driver's your, license. your driver's license. <laughs> then you say, well, I'm driving by the authority of internet. You're going to run into a problem yeah. driving by the authority of passport because those things are sacrosanct in, to a certain degree in certain areas. So these are absolutes. So why don't you quest, question the government establishing? Because no society is run on alternatives. They are run on they absolutes. Are run on absolutes. 
What sends you to jail is because you run far off absolutes. Because when they say it's a 40 or 60 or 80 kilometers, you that's run, absolute. That's absolute. You can't say, well, there are alternatives. Even in Germany where you have the autobahn, uh, the express where you can yeah. speed. At a point, they will put 120 and then, or they put 100. They expect that you should do 100 at that point. But when you move forward and you see they wrote, they've written 120 and then they, they strike it. They strike it. Then run to your death. Run <laughs> at your own risk. <laughs> so every community, every society of people is run by absolute. Why do you think discipleship is contrary? He says, everything you've heard from me, if you were adhered to them, hmm. you are my disciple. Then the last time I discovered that he was going, what did he say? He said, go and teach them to observe all observe things. Observe all that I have taught you. That I've commanded you. So if he asks you to go teach them all things that I've commanded you, then he's telling you this, these are the absolute to live your life by. Hmm. And these days I go on the internet, I see people say, I'm deconstructing my Christian life. I used to be a pastor. I used to be a Christian. Now I'm no longer a Christian. You really didn't probably have enough encounter. No. Because for me, if there's no Bible to read today, it, did not, it does not shake my convictions. It not, I, uh, I've had uh, too much experiences with the Lord to, to shake my convictions. I say this way. I say I, I, am, I am too touched by God to be normal. No, I can't. Can't be normal no more. No, it's late. It, it's, it's already in the past. Something I've experienced, and somebody asked me, I said, for almost four, about 40 years, I've experienced this, and then you're going to tell me it doesn't work. That's the river I've already crossed. Mm. You don't tell me how deep it is. Mm. It works and works. And, and I, I told my, one of my children one day, and I said, son, if I die, or if I get to heaven, and I found that there's no heaven, if I die, I found there's no heaven, there's no hell, no punishment, nothing. There's no incentive for this. Day. If I have, if I have the opportunity to come, you know, to come again to mm, this world, mm. I will live exactly the way I've lived now. Mm. Because while I'm here, it gave me peace. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, it gives me peace. I have the life of God. I, I sleep. I wake up. I never have any thought of, mm. of fear of tomorrow because I know He holds my life in His hands. Yeah. And it's His job. Yeah. To take care of me. Oh, yeah. Because God, I live in his will. So that's it. Absolute. My, my. The absolute is ours. What's your absolute, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters? If there is one word that, if from my heart, because disciple, that's what to me I see as discipleship. Learning to, learning to identify your absolute. Building yeah. character to the point where you say, though he slays me. Yeah. Yet will I serve him. I Yet will, will I praise him. him. I, I will, will trust him. him. No matter what happens. And, and this is what discipleship is. And this is what we are trying to bring to you and uh, mm -hmm. to everyone. Learn to find the, the rock. Go to that rock, the solid foundation that is Christ. Look at the, the story of, of the two builders. One built yeah. on sun and the other built yeah. on... Yeah. There will be storm and wind of and rain course. to everybody. The no pan experience in the scripture hmm. guarantees that you will not face difficulties in life. Hmm. It is actually in the midst of those difficulties that you shine through. Yeah. It's those difficulties that helps to, you know, to give vent yes, to sir. what God has for you. Yeah. Those experiences are what gives you opportunity to give expression. It's like our, our gym, our training center. Yeah. Uh, those experiences That's that right. build our spiritual... That's right. And you, you, you'll find out that in the scriptures, in the Old Testament especially, you'll find out that when there were famines in different nations or whatever, it's then you know who the people of God are. Mm. Whatever there are, there are famine or there's famine mm. in the land. And it is when you are under this pressure that we will determine how much of a disciple you have become. Mm. Whether you're on the path of discipleship. If a person strikes you and you feel like striking them instantly, it's not wrong to feel like that. But if you strike them, every time they strike you, you strike them back. It only shows you are not growing. Hmm. It only shows you are not making progress. Because none of, the, none of the fruits, uh, none of the seeds of, uh, the seeds of discipleship of, I mean, of the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit deposited in you will work without applying them. You have to plant them. You hmm. have to engage those things before they can grow and mature. Wow.
Is anyone hearing this tonight? Is anyone being blessed? Ilze, I see you. The Lord bless you guys. Wow. Pastor David, Bethel, Janeline, Kavia, India. It must be around 1 a.m. or so in India and she's still up watching. Because Amen. these things are so pivotal to the next phase. That's right. We're not going to have anything left. Mm. That's my concern. Mm. If we don't carry the next generation to the point where we bring them. You see, the Bible says when, when, when uh, Joshua was leading out these people, mm. he got to, you know, this place. Uh, what's that um, place where they had to circumcise them? Mm. And then God said to them, you know, you cannot bring these people into this land. Mm. The reason they can't go into this land is this. The whole generation mm. is going into the promised land having not been circumcised. Mm. Meanwhile, circumcision was the seal of that promise th that God gave to Abraham. Yes, sir. Saying, I'm giving you a, a covenant and the seal of that covenant is circumcision. circumcision. And it says any, any male child that is not circumcised will be cut off from that covenant. Oh, yeah. If they will be cut off from that covenant, it means the whole generation that were going into the land until they got to uh, the place, you know, uh, what's that name again? Uh, until they got to the point where he, he circumcised them, Gilgal or something. Gilgal, Gilgal, until he yeah. got to that place, the, the, the whole generation was going to be cut off from the covenant that God had for wow. them. And the Bible said this was the cause wherein they were not circumcised because the fathers had not circumcised them. Hmm. In other words, hmm. if we fail to circumcise a new generation by bringing them to the point of bleeding, bringing them to the point of discipleship, hmm. and letting them know that these pillars are there, these are the conditions for being disciples of Christ. Hmm. If we fail to do that, then the trouble we're going to run, run into is that there's a generation coming that won't know anything about God. I pray you understand what Reverend is saying right now. There is a burden, there is a fire shot in our bones that we can be quiet. That's right. Because... Some of the things you're probably hearing them for the first time, even though some of you have been in church for a long time. The point is, God is raising voices. We are like multivitamins for many of you who are maybe not living here mm. or even to the body of Christ, hearing something that you need to balance your Christian life mm. because you cannot truly become what God intends without going through his precepts, mm. without going through what he has already put in place to be a disciple he didn't call us to make christians so mm. he called us to make disciples he says go into all the world and make and when i think of the word make mm. you know when you're going to make something it requires effort, effort. it requires plan and you process. want to make and process yeah. you yeah. want to make food you want to make a dress you want to make uh, whatever it is god is saying we need to make disciples so the question for me is like how are we making disciples Am I, have I been made into a disciple? And only disciples can make yeah, disciples. Of course. A lot of people are, are, have been to Bible school. They are not disciples. A lot of people are in church. A lot of people are leaders. They are even pastors. They are not disciples. Hmm. And if you are not a disciple, you don't even know how to make one. Hmm. You don't know because you don't know the process of becoming one yourself. Hmm. So you need a disciple. You need to go through the process. Be disciple yourself. And if you are a pastor, if you are a leader in church, if you are a worker, you have not been disciple. It's time to start the process. I've written a book that can help you. Um, I think uh, uh, it's there on the internet and you can access it. Uh, Defeating the mother frog syndrome on discipleship. You have these eight pillars. Go study discipleship. Go back and work out, you know, becoming a disciple first before you try to lead other people. It's difficult for you to lead people into what you don't know mm. or what you have not experienced. Mm. Mm. We are saying this with the body, with the pain, with all the passion in our hearts because we have been there. Yes, sir. Because we started as disciples. Yes, sir. And, and, and they will look at you like a weirdo because the way you run in that cargo is not that serious mm. because you are not a disciple. Mm. If you are a disciple, you will know that it's, it's your life because you are a full-time believer. Mm. You are a full-time disciple. Hey, a full-time Christian. You are a full-time Christian. And then you are a part-time accountant, part-time businessman. But you are a full-time Christian. And like we said in Ephesians, it says, work worthy of your vocation. The Christian Christ life is a vocation. It's a vocation. Hey, being a Christian is a vocation. Yeah. So when they write sometimes, what is your vocation? Say, I'm a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> that is a I'm a disciple. 
people of God, people of God, there's so much more than just coming to church on, on Sundays and sit and then receive the word and go back. What are you doing with the word that you have received? This is the challenge we're bringing to you and I. We have a responsibility when we have received the word. That, and that was how they even called the Christians in yeah. the, uh, uh, um, right. in Antioch. Yeah. Because the, their attitude, their action. Yeah. By the way, it was the Christ, when they called them, it wasn't like a nice word then. No, it was more like a derision. They were mocking them. Look at them. <laughs> Christians. Yeah. And the word Christian means, oh, they are like Christ. They are behaving like Christ. Yeah. So, our responsibility, my responsibility as a Christian, as a believer, is to maintain my relationship with the Lord and realizing that He is my ultimate, my absolute, and so nothing else matters. So when I travel around the world, because yeah. Christ is my absolute and yeah. God, yeah. temptations are not attractive. Yeah. A woman can, whatever, you, blah, 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 I'm, I'm gone. Or maybe somebody offers you, I remember, sir, I'll share this, and can you believe that we're already 55 minutes? Wow. wow. Let me, <laughs> we'll continue tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, same time, we'll continue. So, uh, uh, in, the beginning of, uh, in the beginning of our church, I won't mention names, but uh, 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 someone came with an envelope in, during the service and gave me the envelope uh, and, and said, uh, take. I said, oh, thank you. Uh, is it for me? And she said, oh, no, it's for the church. I said, oh, please put it in the offering, in the offering box. She said, no, 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 take it, take it. I said, is it for me? She said, no. I said, put it in the offering box. Yeah. You, you're giving it to the Lord, not to yeah. me. Yeah. You know, and it was, I mean, nobody would have known. I yeah. would have taken that. Yeah. It would have not been recorded in the yeah. offering if I kept yeah. it. Yeah. However, yeah. a couple of weeks later, maybe actually the same week, the lady was asking, no, do you guys have, I noticed you don't have elders yet in your church. And this is, they are elderly people. Yeah. And I'm thinking in my mind, Okay, um, we don't have elders yet. Yeah. The church is barely six months old yeah. at that time. Yeah. You know, and uh, to cut the long story short, she left the church because I said we are not ready to make elders. Yeah. So in a way, if I was a greedy man, and and I got and the money was a lot of money. Yeah. It, it was over two thousand euros. Yeah, and it's trying to trap you in money. an offering. So I would have taken that and say, oh yeah, praise the Lord. You know, I'm. You know, we've been thinking about elders, and you look like a good person to be an elder. <laughs> but I would have been bought. Yeah. So, and this is because Christ has already been my absolute. He's, That's right. You don't know how I got to where I got to. That's right. That's it was right. because I know that yeah. no matter where I go, listen, yeah. guys, do not be afraid of circumstances and situations. Many times the Lord himself is the one setting you up. Remember yeah. Joseph. Yeah. The Bible says God sent famine. Yeah. He sent a famine to Egypt. Yeah. He, he created a famine and then sent Joseph there. The and not even to go on a horse. To yeah. go as a slave. With yeah. chains on his leg. Could it be that some of the hardship you are going through were arranged by God? Because those things could have probably been what God wants to use to polish your character. To polish your habit, to build your gift of not gift and uh, the fruits the of, fruit the of the spirit. All we are saying, all we are sharing with you tonight and all these days is that there is a responsibility laid on your hands. That the word of God you have received, mm. take it up as your cross. Work with it. Mm. Work on your anger. Work on your. Uh, we make some jokes, some, some ladies or some yeah. people when they are angry yeah. and you go to visit them, you need to put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. This one is not spiritual, not physical yeah, armor yeah. of God because plates are flying. Yeah. So I want to encourage you, every one of you. First, I want to thank you for sharing. I, I see that a lot of you have shared. We had over 41 shares. Thank you for sharing. Let this be a blessing to people all around the world. And we're going to be back again tomorrow, same time, uh, 8, 8 p.m., uh, same time. And uh, if it's been a blessing to you, invite somebody tell someone that there's something coming up there's a word for you and by the grace of god we will hear your heart and the lord will release the right word Raven, yeah. what are, what any any closing words before we close thank you night? for joining us just be here tomorrow same time we're going to do our best to make sure we we you know we run um according to our schedule but i believe that this is the word the church needs now Kalawashi. it's time to wake ourselves up it's time mm. to remind ourselves mm. what our foundation is mm. Every time there is going to be a revival, God sends out prophets. He sends out people to bring the people back to their prophet of, of foundation. Ah. The prophet of, of foundation for the children of Israel has always been Moses. 
So he will send prophets to them and say, go back to the law. Go back to the laws of Moses. Go back to the commandments. Mm. But whenever there's going to be revival in our days, God will send prophets, send people to us to bring us back to the foundation of Christ, mm. who, is our found, who is the prophet of our foundation. Mm. He is the prophet of our foundation, and what he has given to us is discipleship. Mm. The earlier we respond to this, the better, so that what God wants to do can flow very quickly. Hallelujah. Mm. Would you all help me say thank you again to, to, to Reverend Shegun for this wonderful time. It's a beautiful time.